Well, joining me on the broadcast, China NC of the BJP, we are also being joined by Javed Ansari, senior journal, political journalist here in the studio, R.K. Gore, uh, senior advocate, to give us a legal perspective because an important hearing is going to take place in the Supreme Court at uh, 10.30 as well. Shaina, if I can come to you first, how will 104 become 112? Sure. Well, firstly, let's understand that 104 in itself is also a mandate from the people of Karnataka. Nobody wants the corrupt Congress and uh, Janata Dal uh, uh, alliance, which we all know is an alliance of sheer convenience, no ideological belief and absolute uh, uh, mismanagement of what they have done in the state of Karnataka gave us this kind of a unprecedented victory of 104. Now, I think it's important to understand at this juncture that the single largest party does have the opportunity constitutionally to prove on the floor of the house that it has the minister's uh, support from within as well as the MLA's support who are all going to be standing by Mr. Yadurapa. So whether it is people who are discouraged by this unholy nexus yes. from other parties, uh, whether it is MLAs who are inspired by Prime Minister Modi, I'm sure 4 o'clock will be testimony to the fact that they stand in solidarity with Chief Minister Yadurapaji. And I think it's imperative also at this juncture to talk about the possibilities uh, for the single largest party one could obviously be people choosing to re-elect themselves because they don't want the corrupt Congress and uh, the Janta Dal to come into power. And more importantly, if there are certain who believe that their leadership is doing wrong, they have every right in a democracy to well, speak up China, against. I, I don't understand how suddenly ideological belief, ethics and all these things are being spoken about, whether people are... Uh, are uh, suddenly swayed by the popularity of the Prime Minister against whom they fought just a few days back or it is the popularity of Janardhan Reddy, Shri Amalu, those who have been ringing up people on the other camp. Uh, uh, as far as the mandate is concerned, Shana, let's be very clear. You may have got the large number of seats, the mandate is fractured. Nobody has got a clear mandate and hence nobody can actually claim from either group that they are the rightful uh, you know, uh, ones, those who can go ahead and form the government. Uh, uh, you've made a few points about how, of course, people can uh, now choose to cross vote or uh, resign. And possibly, Javed, that is exactly what the BJP would be looking at. And this is where the choice of the pro tem speaker is going to be the most important thing. The man who saved Yadurappa in 2010, can he do it again? Well, what's to stop him from doing it again? And we have, uh, I mean, you don't have to go far. Just look at what the observations were about Mr. About Mr. Bopaya by the Supreme Court. They had called his action then drastic and partisan. And saying that he had expelled the BJP and independent MLAs with the sole purpose of staving off the revolt against the then Chief Minister, Mr. Yadurappa. As far as where they will get their members from, they've said it in court. We hope to get these MLAs from other parties. This mm. is a pseudonym for the fact they are hoping that, you know, through horse trading they will get, they will induce MLAs who were not elected on their ticket but yes. elected on the ticket of the JDS or the Congress party to vote for them. As far as this principle of the single largest party being invited, it cannot be in isolation. It cannot be only in the case of Karnataka. That where the BJP is concerned, you invite the single largest party. If, if other political parties have the, yes. the, become the single largest party, then you invite the BJP, which has a which enters into a post-polar line. It just seems that the constitutional interpretation, Mr. Gore, is it's uh, whenever it suits whatever party in whichever situation, that becomes the set rule for them to, in fact, abide by. It, it, as far as the entire uh, proceeding in the Supreme Court is concerned, once again, the Congress has gone to the court. But the fact also is that this man was the speaker in 2010 as well. He was at that point on, at a time as well not the senior most person. And in Jharkhand, the Congress did the same. Exactly. The definition of interpretation and morality changes. Every time it changes. Whatever suits to them, both the parties. How do these, how do these precedents play out in the court today? Court will certainly examine the... Because uh, today... 
it has a backdrop of arbitrary nature of the timeline hmm. which was granted to BJP. Hmm. So we need to look at that the arbitrariness has been proved to some extent against the governor. Okay. Now this act has to be looked into with the same sus uh, skeptical uh, purview. Right. So Chavid, you want to recover? The point I was making, there is a way for the Supreme Court out of this quagmire, which is the pro term speaker by definition only in normally helps administer the oath, oath. Yes. to newly elected members. Yes. Let him administer the oath have an election for the post of the speaker and that will be the trust vote. Treat it exactly, as a trust vote. Exactly. I beg to disagree on that because pro tem speaker has also uh, a relative role to play whilst voting. He and, will and, inspect. And, and in fact, the pro tem speaker in Goa, it was after the Supreme Court judgment, it was the pro tem speaker in Goa who in fact uh, you know, presided over the trust vote there as well. So we'll have to yeah. wait and see what view does the Supreme Court take on this. But very quickly, let me also bring in my colleagues those who are joining us from the ground. Moshmi Singh uh, has been tracking developments from the Congress camp uh, from the last few days. Uh, we are also being joined by Nagarjun who is uh, coming to us live from, uh, uh, in fact, uh, Nolan Pinto who is coming to us live from Vidan Sauda. Moshmi, if I can come to you uh, first, the Congress, both the senior leaders you spoke to are exuding confidence. We have the numbers, we'll sail through. Wa but the worry still continues. JDS is saying two of their people have been, uh, uh, you know, abducted. JDS has put forward and is the Congress confident their flock will vote in tandem against Yadurappa? See, Uncle, it's very interesting when I asked Gulam Nabi Azad that now if they had their own favor, uh, pro tem speaker, uh, how would they go about if there was foul play? And Mr. Azad said, Mera katil hi, mera munsif hai, kya mere haq mein faisla dega? So uh, he quoted the line of uh, Fakir Saab saying that my murderer uh, is my judge and I don't expect fair play. So clearly, and that's one reason that they are going to the Supreme Court. Uh, the hearing is at 10.30 against the pro tem speaker. Apparently, there were five hours uh, yesterday protesting outside governor's house. Uh, the local leadership tried to get in touch with the governor's office <coughs> and against the pro tem speaker, but they were, their plea was not heard. And that's one reason that they said that they were going to the Supreme Court. But clearly the Congress uh, lot is a vigilant lot. We are right here at Hilton uh, where Gulam Nabi Azad and Kharge have reached along with other leaders and uh, perhaps a brainstorming session and a briefing session uh, would be done. The MLAs have to be extremely alert right. because uh, the entire day uh, all eyes will be at the assembly and every hand would be counted. So I think Azad is going to brief all the MLAs on how they should uh, respond to each and every procedure of the assembly. Okay, Moshmi, stay on with me. Uh, Rahul Shivasav, National Affairs Editor, is also joining us uh, from the Bidhan Sauda. And before I go to Nolan, Rahul, very quickly, you were uh, in, we were discussing about the importance of the pro tem speaker. How can the pro tem speaker swing it either ways? And this time, of course, because he's a BJP man, how can it swing it for the Bharatiya Janata Party? The first and most simple one, uh, uh, Ankit, is that in case there is a tie, then the pro tem speaker can vote. That casting vote can be crucial. There have been past uh, instances where the speakers and pro tem speakers have uh, voted uh, nearly eight times in 80 days. They help the government and it happens. But the fact remains that if there is any attempt of defection, if the BJP has to be helped by those who are switching loyalties from the Congress and the JDS camp, the speaker who can runs the house is the most critical uh, component. Say, for example, if somebody does not take an oath, then the Congress and others may move in for their disqualification before the trust vote is taken. The speaker can say no. Uh, there are several other elements like, say, uh, somebody cross votes. At that time, the Congress may talk about disqualification before or after, abstentions. Every ruling from the chair can determine what the numbers could well be. And that is why the BJP wanted its own man. When uh, when the BJP, uh, Congress and JDS found that the BJP has put its own man with a wonderful track record of helping the government in disarray and short of numbers, then the Congress approached the Supreme Court also only because they don't want somebody who is honest and follows the ethics and rules. They want somebody like the BJP, somebody who will help them on the floor of the House. Absolutely. Everything from here on will depend on how the pro tem speaker conducts the floor test in the assembly.
Uh, Nolan, if I can come to you, uh, we have been told that massive security arrangements have been put in place at the Vidhan Sauda. I was reading yesterday, in 2010 trust vote, Mr. Yadurappa ensured that all the doors of Vidhan Sabha are locked barring one. They were ugly scenes that were witnessed inside the Vidhan Sabha. Today, once again, a lot of people are expecting there will be protests, there will be inside and outside as well. How is the administration now preparing for this? Well, keeping in mind what happened so many years ago, the police have, and the local administration over here have decided that they will not take any chances. In fact, around 3,000 police personnel, this is the number from my sources, uh, in and around uh, the Vidhan Sauda. Section 144 has also been uh, imposed in a radius of about two kilometers over here. Even our own cars inside are not being allowed. They can drop us and the cars have to actually head out. Only the OB vans are allowed in just one side. Public people, uh, the, the common man is not allowed anywhere. You cannot even stop uh, in front of the Vidhan Sauda. The police are there. This morning when I passed by uh, this particular area, I could see groups of about 100, 150 or 200 policemen and police women at each at different different vantage points here. So they're not taking any chances even to, this is on the outside, even to enter inside normally with, with just my logo i could enter but today you require your passes they are questioning you it's extremely strict only those who have some sort of business inside the vidhan sauda are allowed so the media is allowed and of course uh, the government officials and the mlas like imagine Nobody the else, so they do not imagine the administration and, and the officials there they don't know who will be their chief minister uh, you know, till 4 p.m. They would only know who they are going to serve after 4 p.m. Uh, very quickly, Mohammed Khan of the Congress is also joining us. Mohammed Khan, during the campaign, the Prime Minister said Karnataka is the ATM of all the Congress party. Is the Congress going all out because they are worried that the ATM is slipping out of their hands? I mean, we have not seen this sort of a zest fight from the Congress uh, in a while. Well, Ankit, um, Mr. Modi will say whatever he can um, to diminish the glory of his office on any given occasion. But today is not about him. Today is about the fact that we fought a battle, a lengthy and protracted battle against the BJP in the court, amongst the people, and we have given them four sleepless nights. Ankit, you've seen the chronology of events play out over these last four days. First, we stake claim. They refuse. We bring our MLAs to the house of the governor, refuses to meet them. We go to court, at midnight, they say this is a farce. We put the evidence before the people. Ultimately, we prevail, we stand vindicated. And today, they try their last final hand at manipulation. They try and manipulate, they try and manipulate the appointment of the pro tem speaker, which by convention has always been the senior most person. But today, they pick someone who has a history of disqualifying MLAs who don't support the Europe. But Mohammed Khan, you didn't follow the convention in Jharkhand. You also didn't follow the convention in Jharkhand. You'd had no objections to this man in 2010. Suddenly, today, it is crucial, and that is why all the objections are coming out from the Congress party. Nobody can here claim higher moral ground on this. Can I just make a limited point, please? Shana, I'm just coming to you. Can I just make a limited point? I'm just coming to you. Just well, give me two minutes. In 2010, the reason we didn't object is we didn't know then what we know now. Because after he was appointed, he disqualified 16 MLAs to support Yadirapa. And the Supreme Court called his decision unjust, violation of, uh, sorry, a violation of national justice, and a complete go away of uh, go about of fair play. So he essentially has been chastised in the strict, uh, strictest terms by the Supreme Court. Knowing that now, with such a crucial flow test scheduled at 4 p.m., okay. we can't trust this man. All right. No Shana, Shana, you wanted to come in and make a quick point. Uh, uh, but Shaina, don't you think that too much is has been put on stake in this? I mean, is the BJP and the Prime Minister and Amit Shah ready to stake their uh, uh, perception in, in front of the people about the I'm party with the difference me, just to win a state election, election or, or just to form a government in Karnataka? People are seeing how both the parties are using every method possible to ensure that they stay in power.
Firstly, the people are with us, so let's understand that. Secondly, what do we want to ensure? That Karnataka has a stable government with good leadership and absolute political will to deliver on progressive agenda and development planks of Prime Minister Modi. Now, it's very ironical that every time the Congress party comes on television, they play this conspiracy theory. They say, oh, the party and the government of the day is manipulating the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court comes out and says no we will not give you 15 days you have to prove it within 28 hours we welcome that we don't say that no despite the fact that we would want more time to plan and to prove that there are people and the legislators with the bjp we are not here uh, playing conspiracy theory and saying that oh uh, you know that the supreme court is helping the congress party and the janta dal secular it okay. is absolutely rubbish we have believed that there is a constitutional provision there is the role and the prerogative of the governor which you cannot undermine. I can cite hundreds of examples of the past going back to 70 years down to tell you when and where constitutionally the other parties in power namely the Congress have actually used the same uh, measures and they keep talking about Goa please understand the Congress party procrastinated for so long in Goa that people were fed up and moment right. we said uh, uh, Manohar Parikar will be our chief ministerial candidate all the independent MLA said we'd like to support you so you can not fault us for that and you cannot no, use the you same know, but parameters China, it's, it's, it's also I appreciate the fact that at least the charade for political parties in this case it. is out I mean they've they've taken off they're out the, the mask has been taken off because everybody now the only argument for the BJP is look what they did and we are doing the same and that is why don't fault us they did wrong we'll do the same all of us are same when it comes to the hunger for power I have to take a very quick break at this point of time when I come back, I want to understand from Javed is the moral victory for the Congress in this case would be enough or Rahul Gandhi or a senior leadership of the Congress will take the blame. Ultimately, they have been voted out of the power. The chief minister also lost one of his seat. Coming back. Thanks for watching the video. For more such news and updates, please like, share and subscribe to India Today. Also, check out our other great videos from our channel. We know you would love to.